scientific basis and geophysical consequences of geomagnetic reversals and excursions. A fundamental statement. J. Marvin Herndon. Welcome to the show, folks. I'm your host, Diamond, from Magnetic Reversal News, Shinrin Yoku, and Oppenheimer Ranch Project. And tonight, we're going to bring you an interesting layman story using a recent paper by J. Marvin Herndon and some new scientific breakthroughs to coalesce using the multidisciplinary approach, geophysical consequences of geomagnetic reversals and how they relate to human life. Yes, we're talking the melding of paleoclimatology and geophysics with cosmology. Who would have thunk it? Now the paper itself is quite spectacular. And it comes in a journal that would allow such cross-pollination of sciences. The Journal of Geography, Environment, and Earth Sciences. Which means you can meld geography, environment, and, well, multidisciplinary topics in geology, including geophysics. But what's amazing is that Marvin Herndon has had the pleasure of not being indoctrinated into the current narrative and he's gone off on a limb and created his own. Now, we don't agree 100% what Marvin has to say here. But I'll give him a pass on 72% of what is covered in this paper. Which is not a schmaper. And it relates to a recent paper here by Chanel and Vigliotti, 29th May, 2019, that we've shared multiple times on the channel, the role of geomagnetic field intensity in late quaternary evolution of humans and large mammals. And we'll get to that after we cover, well, some of the basics over here at J. Marvin Herndon's paper. Now, let's get on with the analysis, shall we? And we'll just read the introduction. We'll do our own interpretation, and then we'll follow up with the conclusions of the paper. Now we're reading the introduction to scientific basis and geophysical consequences of a geomagnetic reversals and excursions by J. Marvin Herndon. Now, tantalizing reports in the literature seem to suggest a possible connection between geomagnetic reversals and major geophysical events. And the likes of which, like John Casey and our channel, Adapt2030 and others, have, uh, well, risen an eyebrow to the suggestion that these types of events, well, they cause catastrophic responses. Now, these tantalizing reports in the literature seem to suggest a possible connection between geomagnetic reversals and major geophysical events, species extinctions even, and we'll get to that, Continent separation, basalt floods, sea level changes, and more. Earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, oh my. And until recently, making sense of the fragmented and incomplete records of geophysical events in the Earth's past has been impossible. Why? Because there has been widespread misunderstanding of the interrelationship between Earth's origin, composition, geomagnetic field generation, and geodynamic behavior. Scientists tend to take at face value long-standing geotopical ideas that originated in the 1930s and even the 1960s, like the Schmixties, as distinct entities but no one ever corroborates the data or the information. And rarely they question the validity. Although their origins may have changed in light of subsequent discoveries, moreover, geoscientists are typically specialists trained in depth in only one narrow area of earth science. And I can corroborate this as being a graduate level scientist that had my own office at a university. Everyone is separate. If you want to know an answer, you got to go to a different floor and knock on a door. 
Hello, Dr. Smith, Dr. Meyer, can you tell me more about this crystal lattice? Hello, Dr. Simmons. And no one ever, well, there was really not, a, it was a separation of sciences that happened in the 90s and the 2000s. Let's just say that. Consequently, scientists' perception of the earth as a whole is akin to the description of an elephant by blind men. According to an ancient Indian parable, in that parable, a number of blind men attempted to describe an elephant as they touched particular parts of the body. The blind man who touched only its leg said, it's like a pillar. Each proffered a different description based on the body part touched. Scientific specialization is advantageous and the underlying science is sound, securely anchored to the properties and behavior of matter. and radiation, but until recently, earth science has been neither sound nor securely anchored. Individual components of the earth, such as the fluid core, were examined by a narrowly focused specialist, figuratively em emulating the blind men in the above parable. Over a period of more than 40 years, we have advanced theoretical considerations that provide a sound basis for understanding. Now, according to the author, his discoveries logically and casually related include recognizing that the Earth's early formation as a Jupiter-like gas giant makes it possible to derive virtually all geologic and geodynamic behavior of our planet, including the origin of continents, oceans, ocean floor topography, Origin of mountains characterized by folding. Primary initiation of fjords and submarine canyons. Internal earth composition. Two previously unanticipated potentially variable energy sources, including a terra-centric nuclear fission reactor, which we showed you earlier in a video called the georeactor. The origin of the geomagnetic field and the reasons for geomagnetic field variability. Origination of petroleum and natural gas deposits. Particulate pollution as the main cause of global warming. What? Well, he lost us there. <laughs> and so we'll end his uh, nonsensical synopsis at that point. But he's on to something. He's gone out on a limb. He's taken the multidisciplinary approach to jump to the next level. And the next level is here in this paper, which came out a few years ago, and we will discuss it at length. Now, let's just say that the current paradigm over the last four decades has prevented the exchange of information between disciplines. And we would not be incorrect in stating that. And the role of geomagnetic field intensity in late quaternary evolution of humans and large mammals is so important because they simply take the raw data from proxy elements and their own studies and they relate it to paleoclimatology and they also use anthropology. And in this case, vertebrate anthrop anthropology to prove their point. Because you can see rapid evolution and extinction at the same time when you overlay the proxy data. Now, the proxy data is a series of graphs that are using a certain specific vertical column of data, which you can infer things like temperature, magnetic field intensity, and the environment on planet Earth. And what we're looking at here on these graphs is from zero time before present 10,000, 20, 30, 40, 50, 100, 150, 200, 250, 300,000 years ago. And these tan or yellow stripes are the magnetic reversals or excursions we're well aware of. They're not full reversals, so we'll refer to them all as excursions. Capiche? And here we have 
the MD-01. This is the big one. The last gigantic, whoa, life-ending mass extinction on Earth 12,000 years ago. This is the Younger Dryas magnetic excursion. Here's the Mono Lake around 34,000 years ago. The Le Champ at 41. Here it is at 41. The Blake at 100, which was equivalent to the Younger Dryas event, a second Blake event. This is all one major mass extinction event. The Iceland Basin magnetic excursion, Pringle Falls, Portuguese Orphan event. These are all well-known magnetic excursions. And then if we look at them in the context of dung fungi, or extinction events in North America, or extinction events in Australia, there is a direct connection between geomagnetic field intensity and life on planet Earth, directly. There is mass extinctions from massive mammals here when the Neanderthals went extinct 42,000 years ago. And during the Younger Dryas event, mass extinction of megafauna. Mass extinction of vertebrate fauna through the rock record and through time based on the magnetic field specifically. And then the papers go on to hominids exclusively. Where you can see here is the Neanderthal extinction event. And other extinction events of megafauna associated with the field intensity. It's that simple. The final graphic in the paper is mind-blowing. It goes back 300,000 years and shows you all the mass extinction events are associated with geomagnetic field intensity events. When you're on a massive flexure where the geomagnetic field rapidly changes, you have mass extinctions in hominids. Most specifically, when the field drops. On these huge field drops, like the Le Champ, we have the Neanderthal extinction. During the Younger Dryas event, we have the extinction of 60% of megafauna in North America. The Pringle Falls drop, hominids die. Iceland Basin, more mass extinctions. Blake 1 and 2, mass extinction events for hominids. And what do we glean from this? Well, geomagnetic field intensity in late quaternary evolution of humans is directly connected. Yes, the magnetosphere saves our butts. Our lives are as good as they are because we just have come off of solar maximum. This is the most quiet, quiescent time that hominids on Earth can live. No other time is as fine. Any other time, it's mass extinction. And we're headed down the ramp rapidly towards the next one. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. And I don't know how to explain it any simpler way. All the links to all the information will be below. Please read it for yourself. A lot of it is completely digestible to the layman. That's why we're here, to steer you in the right direction. Don't believe us. Check the sources. Come to your own conclusions and prepare for what's inevitable. Learn how to grow food. Share this with like-minded people. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell and be well. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance in a dystopian world during a geomagnetic excursion. It's boom time, kids. Be safe. We love you. Click on one of the other boxes to gain more knowledge. And check out our interview with Paul Cottrell on the nature of the control mechanism in our dystopian world. 1984 is 2021. No, 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 no.